Quick announcement. You've been seeing me as Bucky on this channel since I started it. I'm not going anywhere, but you'll start to see some other people appear on this channel with me. We have a theme now. To that end, you can call me Magpie. You'll see what the theme is later. Let's go. Is Geralt of Rivia a Batman? Well, not on the surface. But wait, the answer is less cut and dry than you'd think. I just binged almost four hours of Batman analysis, and I'm about to make it everyone's problem. The kind folks at Overly Sarcastic Productions and Cosmonaut Variety Hour have both recently done a series of Batman reviews and analyses, and I've been playing a lot of The Witcher 3. That all has me percolating a bit. Those videos laid out a pretty good idea of what a Batman is, and I like to think after more than 200 hours hanging out with Geralt that I have a pretty good idea of what makes him a compelling character. I'm going to go ahead and say that, yeah, I can argue that Geralt is compelling for many of the same reasons Batman is compelling, even if they're not super similar on the surface. So what did Cosmonaut say about what a Batman is? You can watch his videos at the links in the description, and I really recommend you do. The dude's love for Batman is infectious. This is an 11 year old can of Mountain Dew, so uh, bottoms up. First, the roles of Batman and Bruce Wayne need to be distinct from each other. Bruce has to be a little unhinged. You gotta believe he'd become Batman. He's not completely crazy, but he chose to be Batman. He's obsessed, and he's disciplined. What's crazy about him is how obsessed he is with his job, which is to prevent anyone from having the same bad night he had in Crime Alley. Batman, meanwhile, has to have a cool voice, and he has to be visually intimidating. He doesn't have to have tech, but if he does have it, it has to be cool and fit Batman. Batman also has to be competent. Newbie Batman can mess up a little, but they need to learn from it and come back. His obsessive discipline means he has to be good at everything. He can't suck, he has to be good at his job. Batman also cannot directly kill anyone, especially with a gun. Batman would never use a gun. Cosmonaut considers Kevin Conroy's Batman in Batman the Animated Series and Related Works to be his top portrayal of Batman. Why? His Bruce Wayne comes across as a confident, stylish, complex man who keeps his depth hidden for the audience. Brucey is a little sarcastic and sassy. His voice is distinct. Bruce is calm and suave. And for me, with my voice, try to create a dark, gritty, filthy New York street. Batman, meanwhile, is usually the most skilled person in the room, leaving no mystery unsolved. Hell, he's the smartest person in his own show. The Batman in this show has streamlined and iconic gear. Kevin Conroy has said he got his role as Batman in part by seeing the character as akin to Hamlet, a tragic and philosophical kind of person with an inevitable fate. What about overly sarcastic productions? They just released a detailed diatribe about Batman too. According to Red, Batman should be suitably imposing and intimidating, but still able to comfort a crying child. Batman feels like he doesn't have a choice other than to be Batman because it's what he's made himself to be and what the world has made him become. He wants a world where no one else is put in the same position as him, and really, more than anything, he wants Batman to have never been necessary or even born. The tragedy is that he cannot be anything but Batman, but his most profound wish is for Batman to never have been created. So this version of Batman, kind of a tragic inevitability. He's literally a tragedy. A bad thing happened that we knew was coming, and it shaped his life forever. And, you know, it's, it's a foregone conclusion to a certain extent. It's good. It, this is a way that a lot of tragic stories are framed, where it's like, you try yeah. to avoid this outcome and it happens anyway. And that Mask of the Phantasm, the flashbacks in that are basically framed as like, the tragic outcome he's trying to avoid is becoming Batman. Red and Cosmonaut both go into a lot more detail than I could cover in this video because they already did it. Go watch those videos. So why did all of this Batman analysis make me think of Geralt? I have several reasons. First of all, Doug Cockle should voice Batman. Half the reason that I am making this video is because Geralt just straight up has a Batman voice. Military camp. No locals allowed without the express consent of the garrison commander. I look like a local to you. You look like trouble. Dead wrong. I make trouble go away. I'm a witcher. The way Geralt is able to be a bit of a jokester and a sarcastic asshole, but still be intimidating, and not nearly as growly as he's memed to be, really fits the bill for me. Cast Doug Cockle as Batman. It's time. Folks say we witchers have no feelings. It's a barefaced lie. Right now, I feel rage, and I can't wait to vent. Second, Geralt does have to be a detective. He's not the smartest person in his own story, but he has to be pretty resilient and persistent in uncovering details around him to get a complete picture. The smaller and bigger quests all fulfill this idea of piecing together clues to get that bigger picture. 
the Arkham Knights games even have the exact same Witcher Vision slash Detective Vision gimmick. Playing a Witcher game is really like pulling up a fantasy Batman game. That being said, it's not very Batman to have magic powers. I will give you that. Because it's a fantasy setting and Geralt is a magically enhanced warrior, there's a lot that revolves around his super skills and abilities. I do think it's here that the obsession and determination shines through. Geralt has trained for decades and is solely devoted to his craft. All of his magic is tailored to what is personally useful for him in combat and monster hunting. He needs to brew his own potions and understand what they do to be effective at his job. There's a methodology in learning about the targets you need to take on, a single-mindedness to being devoted only to learning every single advantage to take out your foe that Geralt and Batman both share. Unfortunately, Geralt kills people. Geralt kills people so hard and never took an oath to not deftly and acrobatically slice people's heads off. That's probably the most hard line, this dude isn't a Batman trait. I don't have a defense for this. It's medieval Poland and this is the solution that works for him. Geralt didn't choose to be a witcher, but he is passionate and determined to see his job through. Geralt is not quite the same self-sacrificing hero as Batman. He works for pay and swears he won't get involved in politics many times, but he still has a code of ethics. He's still someone who dreamed of being a gallant knight. The world beat him down and away from that goal, but in his heart, he wants to do the right thing. Or at least, I'm taking the options in The Witcher 3 that make it seem like that's true. I guess this entire argument gets broken if you play Geralt as a complete asshole, but hey, that's agency in games. We never see what Geralt's greatest wish is for certain, but he's not the guy who wishes there wasn't a need for Witchers at all. That's Lambert. If I had to guess, based on the introduction and possible endings to The Witcher 3, Geralt's greatest wish is to live with his family, witchers and sorceresses and Syria alike, with no need for him to be a witcher anymore. I think the biggest fundamental difference between the Batman and the witchers is that there isn't one witcher holding down the entire goddamn continent. There isn't a way to make any more witchers, sure, but Geralt can be somewhat assured that if he retires, there's at least a couple others and possibly Siri running around trying to keep the monster population down. I do think there's one more important component since Cosmonauts stress it so much about Batman. Geralt is pretty cool? Or at least, the games really want you to think he's cool. Geralt sticks out in the continent as someone who quips, who sasses his companions and strangers alike. The games are designed to make you feel indescribably badass while playing, deflecting claws and blades, striking back with offensive magic. Over the course of three games, Geralt has grown into a symbol of masculinity. Even if Geralt of Rivia isn't completely 100% comparable to Bruce Wayne and Batman, I still think it's worth looking at these two characters together. The Witcher games are compelling in part because they are detective games. They're about the fantasy of being so supernaturally competent that you can walk into almost any fuck-up someone else created and clean it up and even get something out of it. They're about eking out safe parts of the fucked up and depressing world, piece by piece, because it's your duty. It's also about Gwent, I think? But mostly it's about making a better world. Thanks for watching.